previously on Key Piece One. Are you saying anole or anal? I was saying uh, the little lizard creature, anole. It's probably catered, but like it, everything has like just a fine patina of cum over it. Like you sure. don't want to eat any of the food because there's just like a, a mist. Yeah, speak for yourself. It was just people in like silver, shitty 80s spacesuits, like fucking and stuff. Oh, here it comes. I, All right. uh, what do you mean here it comes? Uh, perhaps the pods, uh, they can only procreate uh, if somebody spills some chism. Dave, I have constructive criticism too. Sure, the engorgement of the clitoral tissues. About 110 seconds into this, I got extraordinarily confused. My penis? Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, one of my dollars came off. Very naked ladies, it's your cover. It's your cousin, David Marvin Bates, Naked Ladies. That's genius, guys. You know what they say about bridesmaids and groomsmen at weddings, right? They're real desperate to get lucky, so go get some. So today we're talking about Key Piece 1. <clears throat> key Piece 1. Um, a item. <laughs> and... <laughs> this is like, uh, un- uncommonly self-aware for you. Do, 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 everything to Guppy Classics. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in The Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by the guy who unlocks my heart oh. to oh. Gary Butterfield. Bra- well, oh boy! Yeah, I almost called you Brayton. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I mean, came close enough that you essentially did. I don't know if I essentially did. One cent, what, if you get a syllable in, it's official. What if I was saying uh, bra? <laughs> worse. Much worse. <laughs> Just calling you bra. Or brave one? <laughs> brave one. Brave one Cameron. My, my oh, brave shit. one. Shit. 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 <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is Teenage Derp. No! Oh, I would... To be fair, uh, I just saw Brayton. Oh, well, now you're just bragging. Yeah, I know. It was cool. It was good. I never see Brayton because we're both bad at, like, planning. We're like, oh, we should get lunch Sunday, and then Sunday never comes. Yeah, Sunday never comes. My favorite uh, Green Day song. Also my favorite Green Day song, Gary. That's why we're friends. Green Green Dayton. Um, anyway, every episode of Everything to Guppy starts with Gary Butterfield reading a poem about an ungen. Yep. Uh, everything to ungen. Um. We can't Poem about an ungiant. We can't fuck around this much, though, because we left people on a cliffhanger, dude. That's true, Gary. We did. Obviously, we already covered... In Key Piece 1, we covered a lot of, like, the essentials. Yep. Insofar as we said, this is an item. Yeah, and and we a lot of the essentials of space come, or whatever it was called. <laughs> Boy, the TTC <laughs> on this week of episodes is real short. <laughs> the, well, so, you know, I can't... Somebody complained about that, but I never know if somebody's actually complaining. I don't think they were really complaining. It's, it's very hard to say, but I also, I think that I want to impress upon anybody that, uh, how little thought and for, forethought specifically, uh, goes into the show. Yeah. Gary, I've actually, I've been, uh, binging Monster in my podcast lately. Mm-hmm. Amazingly focused in comparison. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's pretty unfocused compared to say like, you know, watch out for fireballs or something. Yeah. Well, something good. Yeah. You know, it is, this is, this is, it is, Purely instinct at this point. So, which means that you're going to get a little cum in there. Yeah. I mean, that's just what's going to happen when these two wacky dudes hop on the mic to just, mm. just spit. We just throw spit. in the cans to spit a uh, warm fire. The, yeah. Um, Gary, but... something terrible has happened to the, uh, the wiki. I yeah. got to tell you. It is running what I think is a stream of two people playing FIFA or something. <laughs> uh-oh. And I cannot stop looking at it. <laughs> Like it is mesmerizing, mesmerizing in that way that soccer kind of is. Yeah, yeah. Where it never stops. So yeah, soccer. The the first soccer game is still being played now. Like, yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. And luckily, I think my ad blocks are just uh, mighty because all I ever get are ads for Gamepedia Pro. So if I wanted to upgrade my experience, yeah. I no, I, I I have to scroll away from this because it is basically a brown note. Just yeah. like <laughs> soccer. This is. Soccer is apparently my the king in yellow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, your deer in headlights. You just had to have, uh, you know, present you with a soccer game. It can paralyze you. Aw, oh, Gary, don't tell people how to paralyze me. I, I, people already know how to paralyze you, dude. Yeah, just stick a knitting needle through the back of my yeah. neck. Common paralytics. Key um, Piece 2 is yeah. the sequel to Key Piece 1. Yes, you don't have to have seen the first one, but it helps. I mean, um, you do have to have seen the first one because the second one won't drop without the first one. 
Is that does that comport with my experience? I think that's true. I think key piece one drops and then key piece two drops. I feel like I've maybe oh here's what happens. Tell me. Sometimes Gary. I just get key piece two because I've re rolled key piece one. Yeah. Yep. And then I just get two and it's like, well, what's this shit? All right. Here's what the key pieces do. Yeah, first of all, two, there's all they're an item. They yeah, they are they are both items. They are a pain in like they take a long time to unlock. Yeah. It sucks. Um, like getting them is a bummer. So you have to get, uh, be in an angel room to get them, but there are multiple ways. Well, one of the two main ways is to be in an angel room. Yeah. And that, it's probably the most common one. Not for me, but oh. at this point, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it through sacrifice rooms typically. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not tons of reason to keep doing this once you've unlocked all the stuff for me. Like I like the fight, but I just don't. Don't do yeah. it. I, um, Gary, so no we, foreshadowing. Let's linear. Okay. linear. linear. Okay. Linear. Linear. No foreshadowing. No long digressions about pornographic. This. Um, yeah. Okay. So you get this from fighting the angel statue in the angel room. But only after you have at least once beaten either the chest or the dark chest. Yes. Which means you need to have killed the boss of the cathedral or the uh, or shield six times in order to unlock the Polaroid or the Dark Polaroid, the negative rather. Yes. So we um, are way down. You have been playing a lot of Isaac at this. Yeah. Point. This is this is an advanced move. You bomb the angel statue, which you have to kind of know that you can do. It creates this, this mini boss, uh, one of these angels that's Uriel and something else. They have names. Uh, Raphael, I think, is the other yeah. one. And there's uh, also a dark one, but that's not going to pop up here. Yep. Um, you kill them, you get a key piece. Then you do it again, baby. Yep. So you need to be doing a, to do it the traditional way. You need to be doing a run where you're generating angel rooms for one thing. So no devil deals if you're doing this, mm-hmm. which is an enormous pain in the ass for the lost to do this. Since oh yeah. The lost derives almost all of their power from taking devil deals. Yeah, absolutely. And can't use the alternate method. Yep. 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 Uh, you get both key pieces. Then. You play the whole game. Yeah. Uh, when you get the two key pieces, they do merge together into a full key. Yeah. And they're technically a familiar. Like, they follow you around, but they don't do anything. Yeah. Don't block bullets. Until. Until. You get to the chest. What's in the chest? A door, which I had no idea, was called the Golden Gate. Yeah. Like the bridge. Like the big old bridge. Yeah. Truly one of the most famous bridges. Gary, could you name a more famous bridge right Jeff. now? <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> I was going to go with the Ponte Vecchio. But Jeff is <laughs> the, the, um, uh, the so there's also that bridge from 300. Oh, that's, the, was that a bridge? The Sparta Bridge. Didn't they hold somebody off at a 300 bridge? Gary, I don't remember anything from that movie, and I challenge anyone who has ever seen it to remember anything from it either. Paul, who listens to this show, does. He loves that movie. <laughs> uh, like he's he's hey. going to talk about it. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. He's going to talk about 300. Isn't that weird, right, Paul? Um, <laughs> the uh, So that opens that door. Narrow casting. And, and you get access to, uh, in my mind, if, it, if it's considered one of the super bosses, the best of the super bosses. Oh, the best boss in the game, pretty much, I would say. A really, really great boss. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I, lo- uh, I, lo- I love fighting Mega Satan. Which we cannot burn a lot of cast on because that's an episode somewhere down the line. Yeah. But, yes, uh, Mega Satan is amazing. Uh, you fight him. Like, this works regardless of whether you're in the chest or the dark chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So, obviously, this is this is an endeavor. Oh, yeah. This is something you are aiming to do from at least the second floor of your run when you decide whether or not to take your first devil room. High intentionality to this. It's very unlikely you're going to do it on accident. However... What also unlocks the golden gate is dad's key. And that is probably my most frequent way of doing this now that I've unlocked all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, dad's key unlocks everything. We might have talked about it already. I honest to God don't remember. And the numbering on the items is weird sometimes. Mm-hmm. It is worth noting that the way you unlock dad's key is to do this once. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, just, it's just trying to make yeah. this a little bit easier because they know it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. It is. It's sort of a shortcut. Yeah. Albeit a shortcut that requires you to get one item out, out of, of like six hundred or, or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it just it just determines like if I'm gonna hey if I have the means to do it, I'll fight Mega Satan. Otherwise, nah. You know. That being said, uh, obviously this is luck based because mm-hmm. even with perfect chances, 
Unless you have very certain items. We got a pocket problem? We got a pocket problem, Gary? Uh, no, that was me dropping a bottle cap problem. Oh, I thought that was a click, click it pocket. No, no, no. I, I got real I worried about pocket. I don't click it. I don't click or train pocket. Even though, you know the little noise device he has? They like uh-huh. chase the ball around that I use sometimes? Yeah. I found a silence one. A silent one. Oh, nice. So I don't have to take it away from him because it always hurts him. Like he doesn't like it when I put it away. And now I don't have to because it doesn't make that much noise. The new one. Yeah. So, yeah. Silent yeah, but good, deadly. Good time for pocket. Good time to be pocket. Yeah, what a what a time to be alive and and also my cat and, and stupid and an animal. Can you imagine licking my beard? If so, man. you might be pocket. Oh man, Gary, I imagined it. Yeah, he loves. Oh, it. ooh, there's some cheese in there. Yeah, there's all kinds of things in there. There's also, I mean, the nice thing is that the base level there's sweat, so it like t- it tastes like sweaty meat, like at the absolute least. Well, and what does best, it? That, it tastes that's like just soup. steak, Gary. Yeah, and he loves it. Yeah, you're you're a real surf and turf. Generally, what he eats is either uh, kibble or meat gogurt, so it's an upgrade regardless. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I had to give you a choice between like licking my beard or eating one of these meat gogurts, which one would you choose? You know, uh, boy, um, what's the scenario? Um, gun, gun to gun to head or gun to stomach? Um, gun to kneecap at first. Boy, uh, how much how much of the cat? Gogurt? Do I have to eat a tube? You getting them in tubes now? Yeah, the cat gogurt only comes in tubes. Okay, really? Yeah, it's a, nu- a nuba churro. It's a tasty ta- cat treat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh boy, how much beard licking I gotta do just till you come? <laughs> um, I don't masturbate while my cat nuzzles me. I um, then let's make it interesting though. Let's make it hard for both of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's, a, it's a gun that fires both ways oh no it's, just it's, it's like that tied one, to our knees it's that one unit into the breach uh that, that shoots both ways so like we both have to you know the janus cannon yeah it's the janus cannon it's the gun i'm using yeah gary this sounds like the worst the worst saw movie i've ever goddamn <laughs> this heard this is a really rough saw mr <laughs> hughes you <laughs> lived your life without a candle in the wind now yeah boy for you to lick beer or eat gogurts. So I think, honestly, as I, here, I'm going to say something. <laughs> yeah, I sure. think in that scenario, I might have the rougher deal because I'm not going to appreciate you licking my beard, and I'm sure as hell not going to appreciate having my kneecap shot. Whereas yeah. you can just eat a meat gogurt and get out. You know, that's true. Do you go free if I eat the meat gogurt? I assume so. It's kind of like the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, Gary, <laughs> that's. Ex- I don't know if you've played some of the later nine 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 games. That is exactly the prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, it's mostly about meat yogurt and Janus kind of cannons. This is also the Monty Hall problem. Oh sure, yeah, and the Stanford Prison Experiment. Man, Stanford Prison Experiment's cool. Yeah, it's really fun. It's like very fucked up and horrible science. Oh yeah, really bad science. It's all bad, but yeah. I'm glad someone did it. That you know, forty years ago. Yeah, it's fascinating. Fifty years ago. 60? 60. Do we uh, do we have anything else to say about the keepy? I did, Gary, but okay. then you clicked. Okay. <laughs> a, <laughs> like, a click happened, and that's how easily... Maybe I am. Maybe you're trained. Maybe I have I you uh, <laughs> digression oh, shit, trained. I'm, I'm clicker trained. Yeah. Uh, you know, that reminds me of a time I was at a bakery. Okay. So what I was saying, Gary, is it an on-off switch? Am I the clapper? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Do you have a clapper on my stupid bullshit? Yeah, I, got, I installed a clapper in your brain while I stay at your house. <laughs> well, I wasn't there. Your brain was. Hey, Gary, that's fair. The other point I was going to make, and I alluded to this earlier, is that this is a luck-based process because you can, without a couple of items, you can't guarantee an angel room. Yes. Which is why the game has a way to guarantee an angel fight. Uh, kinda. Sort because of. Because that's also very luck-based because you have to have, have the resources to do it. Okay, sure. If you have enough health. Yes. Uh, there are sacrifice rooms or self-sacrifice, I think is technically the term. Yeah. They're those empty rooms with the spikes in the middle. Yep. If you do those a set number of times, you will spawn these angel bosses. Yep. Uh, you can get both of them. And then if you keep pushing it, eventually you'll be teleported directly to the chest. Yeah. So, hey, speed run. Yeah. Super speed run and very difficult speed run. You know, yeah. If you're doing this early on. Because Mega Satan is very hard without a good build. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that is the alternate way to get these key pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the way I tend to do it because I don't like relying on luck. Yeah, I and there are a lot of and there are a lot of ways to game health in this game. There are. Yeah, you can you can have just a lot of health on the floor. It's also like we'll get to it when we talk about just kind of rooms in general. 
Yeah, the, uh, can't wait for that season. That'll be fun. We can talk about libraries and shit. Oh, um, that's true. The, uh, but, uh, you know, there there are, uh, once you see one of those things, that's one of those rooms, like, kind of like the, um, the, sac- the, the rooms with the spikes on the door. Uh-huh. You know, that are like, you know, if you're new to the game, you're like, why would I ever go in there? And then, like, once you've actually played a little bit, it's like, of course I'm going to go in there. Yeah. Um, I usually will do a couple plays on a self-sacrifice room if I'm early on. Like, if I'm leaving a floor with three health and no spirit hearts, mm-hmm. I'll do a couple plays on the self-sacrifice room. Yeah. Uh, keeping in mind that once upon a time, what you got from those was just random. Yeah. And was terrible. Yeah. Whereas yeah. now there is, like, you can actually, if you go on the wiki, there is a schedule associated with them. Some of the benefits of which are incredibly massive. Yeah. Well, at the very least, you get that spirit heart one. That's great. Yeah, like a room full of spirit hearts. So okay. good. Yep. Um, I think that's about it. I, Gary, I've I've said all I goddamn care to. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's nothing you can fucking do to make me talk on another topic. Well, tell them what they can do if they like the show. Well, Gary, uh, one time I was living in Chicago with this guy named Vlad. And Vlad was such a weird guy. He was like a 19-year-old Russian guy who worked at... I have heard a- this story. <laughs> <laughs> Ratings and reviews to Apple Podcasts, <laughs> patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Uh, good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is interesting. I forgot that this is we got we got some interesting stuff coming. Yeah, uh, I think that was our first instance of emotional violence this week. Yeah, the, the time to emotional violence also pretty low. <laughs> <laughs>